This was the scene on Plymouth Hoe, as probably a quarter million people had their long wait rewarded by the privilege of being the first to observe from the shore the approach of Gypsy Moth. Sir Francis Chichester had been sighted, and it was known that he had determined to make Plymouth that evening. A fleet of welcoming boats went out to meet him. There she was, quietly making her way home. On Plymouth Hoe, no bowls were played today. For Lady Chichester, anxiety was over. Before her now, the happiness of reunion. From the steps where her husband would land, the launch left to take her to Gypsy Moth. In honor of this great man of the second Elizabethan age, had assembled a friendly armada, a word inseparably associated with Plymouth. Before long, there were so many craft, there seemed hardly room to sail, but through them all, in the unhurried manner of the sea, came Gypsy Moth. To those who were close enough, Sir Francis appeared no more harassed than if he had been for a quiet Sunday sail. As Gypsy Moth passed the breakwater, Sir Francis Chichester had completed his voyage round the world. That feat ensures him a proud place in the company of the greatest of maritime history. Rarely can there have been a man who wore his greatness so modestly. The beacon blazed in proclamation of a hero's triumph. At Guildhall, this untiring man met the press, but characteristically, at the time, had little to say about his voyage round the world.